Uh, Frostpunk is a Arctic survival base building game from the same people who made this War of Mine. Uh, it's a societal simulation, lots of like hard decisions you're gonna have to make about things you might have to do to survive out here in, in the horribleness um, that is Frostpunk. So let's go and get this started. In the summer of 1886, again, this is punk, isn't like steampunk, but this is Frostpunk, the snowstorms began, crops failed, people starved, millions fled south, they met only chaos, famine, and death. In the farthest reaches of a resource-rich north, the British Empire began construction of heat-bearing generators, where f chosen few could survive safe from the chaos of crumbling civilization. They ran out of time. An apocalyptic ice storm came from the south, devouring all in its path. People fled in panic. Some managed to cross the seas and reach the site of a generator, only to find it frozen solid. The generator was designed to power a city capable to weather the end of the world. It forced us to build it. So, first, how freaking gorgeous is it? Look at the frost around the, the, the edge of the screen. Well, you won't be able to see it with this little pop-up up here. It's going to be fantastic. Like, it's a game where I'm actually, I wish I could zoom in more. I mean, we can zoom in a little bit, but I wish I could zoom in even more than it allows because it's so freaking nice to look at. And, and a great user interface. It helps. My opinion of the user interface and design of this was helped by the fact that right before I loaded this up for the first time, I tried to load up the Guild 3, which is, oh my god, like, so horrible. <laughs> Fight the cold. We need to get the generator working. It provides heat and power to the other buildings. Without it, we freeze to death. Stocks pile some coal and start the generator. So the tutorial mode is turned on. But like, look at this, the snow... The frost on the edge, people sort of milling around over here. Great design stuff. Wait till they start moving. So in the center, we currently have our steam generator. It doesn't have any coal, so we can't run it. So first thing we have to do is start collecting some coal. Now, there are some little piles of coal on the surface over here. So I'm going to send out some workers. We have workers and engineers. Workers are just simple laborers, so we're going to prioritize them to send them out here. We'll do a couple of coal piles over here. So we can assign 15 workers to each one of these. So we're going to do that and check out what happens when we start moving around in here. Look, like, here's where I wish I could really zoom in. Do you see them, like, they're actually, like, having to push a trail through the snow. They're all, like, bundled up and hunched over. You can see, like, the, the guy in the front here, he's having to, like, trudge through the snow. And as a Canadian from Northern Ontario, like, I feel you, bro. I feel you. Holy cow. I, I, I just think this is stupendous. So we're gonna do that. We've got um, we've got some wooden crates over here. I'm gonna send out a bunch of workers to go and grab those as well. And we've got some steel wreckage over here. I'm gonna send the last five workers and um, the, some engineers. Yeah, we'll send out the 10 engineers to go to the full 15 of 15. That leaves us with five idle engineers as well as 15 idle children. More on that later. So there you go. So the people have arrived at the coal pile and they're gonna start hammering away at this bring some coal back to the generator. We can see our resources at the top. We currently have 72 coal and that's gonna increase. We start at zero. This is our wood. This is our steel. This is our raw food. And then we also have food rations. And we have something called steam cores over here. We are on day one over here. We've got our day forecast over here, including the fact, hey, on day four, the temperature is gonna drop by another freaking 20 degrees. It's negative 20 Celsius already. It's gonna go minus 40. And you can see, I don't know how well it's translating on on, um, on Twitch here, but there's like snow blowing. Like, I, I physically feel cold watching this game. It's a good thing I'm playing this, it's, you know, it's still early fall. If I was playing this in January, I would have to be wearing a parka to play this. Look, these people are coming back. They've got sacks of stuff on their back. And again, like just carving the trail through the snow, just wonderful. So, our first uh, sort of quest in the tutorial here is to gather up to 200 coal and then activate the generator. Well, we can activate the generator now, um, but there we go. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and get it started. That's going to be fine. So, we're going to activate steam level one, which is all we can do right now. We have to get technology to unlock more. We're going to start the generator, and you can, see melt. you can see the snow melt as it pushes it back from around here. We've actually got a little bit of warmth going on. So we're still getting coal in, which is great. We should hit our 200 stockpile, um, hopefully fine before the end of the workday. 
because of course while the generator is going their totals are going down now we've got a warning down here we've got 80 homeless people and actually probably soon uh, someone might give us a quest to go and get everyone warmed up ah the generator hums with reassuring warmth but we should not take it for granted the gen if the generator goes down the city dies be mindful of coal reserves now, hopefully everything is like working properly on the the stream because like I don't know if there's any like recording frame rate issues or whatever if there is the game is running perfectly smooth on my side so I'm just cross my fingers that the stream's going okay for this um now food there is no city if we starve to death seems reasonable secure a way to provide raw food and build a cookhouse to prepare meals so I'll actually just pause for a second here so that time doesn't tick by while I, I talk about this um the uh, there's excellent help over here where we can find out all kinds of information controlling time temperature information temperature ranges from freezing to comfortable freezing very cold cold chilly i love there's four different levels of it's freaking cold four levels of it's freaking cold then finally get to livable and then and only then you get to comfortable as a final level which is amazing we're going to start we're going to do our first construction over here at this point uh you'll notice there's a couple meters down here as well discontent and hope that'll that'll definitely come into play real real soon <laughs> Look more now. All right, excellent, good. Okay, so we're still paused right now. So the construction screen is here. We've got uh, five categories currently. Again, this is just the demo. Not everything is unlocked. And actually, we need to unlock a bunch of technology to unlock more buildings as we go forward. Right now, the game is prompting me that, hey, it would be an excellent idea uh, to build a cookhouse. So a cookhouse will convert raw food to, to food rations. And it's a, it's a one to two ratio. One raw food, I believe, will make two food rations. If people need to, they will eat raw food, but it's not as efficient, and it tends to make them miserable. So we will produce a cookhouse over here, and you build in a ring around the generator, which I've never seen a game do this exactly like that. Like, you're building in a circular ring, which makes sense. People want to be, like, tucked up right against the generator for maximum heat as much as possible. Different buildings have different insulation levels. People will get chilly. So I'm going to go and put it there. Now, anywhere that's yellow is a legal place to put it. Okay, although it'll complain about certain things, you know, it's not, it, it needs to be, well, this one here, I think needs like the heat zone. It needs power and stuff like that. Green is super good. Yellow will let you put it down, but it won't work until you like connect up a road and or expand your heat zone. But green, you're hundred percent good. So we're going to put a cookhouse over here. I will also um, queue up a hunter's hut over here. This will allow hunters to go out into the wilderness and hunt food. Ah! Um, and so they're going to bring back 15 raw food per day. Now that'll turn into 30 cooked meals per day. But we actually have a population of 80 right now, so we'll see how that goes. It's going to take me 20 wood to do. That's okay. We're going to put it down there. Now at this point, idle workers are the people who build buildings. Okay, so my five idle engineers, they're going to go and they're going to start working on this. You can see five of ten for the construction here. It'd be awfully nice to be able to build this sooner. We do actually have a total of 20 unemployed people, the five engineers and those 15 children. Desperate times, right? Desperate times? We've got a button here for our book of laws. We're going to go and click on our book of laws here. Adaptation. Find a, a ways to fight with hunger, sickness, boredom, and the human condition. I suspect that this book of laws will be extended later on uh, because there's not a lot available here in the demo. And the fact that there's this like initial category click here makes me think there's going to be sort of multiple levels and multiple categories later on. So we're going to click over here. So this is our adaptation area. And these are the laws that are available for us to set in this tree. Um, we're going to have to make decisions about what to do with the dead. We're going to have to do, make decisions about what to do with the dying. We're going to have decisions to do regarding food over here. Um, what about entertainment, like a fighting arena? Get out some of that, um, that aggression. We've got the ability to force people to work for 24 hours straight. I'm sure nothing bad will come of that. And then over here, we've got the question of what to do with kids. So we've got... These are two mutually exclusive decisions. We can decide that children will work. Although initially only in safe jobs. Later on you can see child labor, all jobs. But early on we say children can work, but we'll only put them in safe jobs. That'll be gathering, construction, working in the mines. I think those are all considered to be safe for various values of safe. The other option is to build child shelters over here. This would unlock a new building called Child Shelter. Um, 
they will be safer if they stay in child shelters during the day. Um, they won't cause any mischief. Signing this law will increase hope in the colony. I'll have to build a child shelter. Now, what's interesting is if you go that route, I believe afterwards you will be able to unlock um, the ability to have kids at least help with certain things, like help with maybe certain medical things in, in the hospitals or something like that. So it's not that they won't work necessarily. On the other hand, I think we should all agree that these little bastards should earn their keep, right? I love like this picture of like the sad child trudging through the snow, hauling stuff. He's so miserable. He's so miserable. Minor miners. I love it. Thank you, Obsidian. So, there's not enough hands to do all the work. We shall allow children to be employed in safe places, like cookhouses or hothouses. So we can sign this bill into law. Passive effect, children can be employed in safe jobs. Signing this will slightly decrease hope. Hey, better miserable than dead. I agree with you, the Glens. Absolutely. So we're going to sign this law. We can sign one law every, tw any tw every 12 hours right now. So children can work in safe places. So what I'm going to do, I don't remember where we signed some engineers. One of these little piles. Oh, right here. Uh, no, sorry, I'm wrong. One of these piles got engineers assigned to it. A cookie to whoever remembers which one it is. Oh, is it the steel over here? Okay. So I'm going to remove the engineers from this. And we're going to throw kids in here. So kids are going to go through the steel wreckage. And they're going to pick apart at wreckage and help bring it back to the base. There we go. So we've got some children working there now, which is going to be lovely. Uh, we still have the 20 unemployed. We can send out the kids somewhere else. I think they might help with the construction, though. So we're going to leave them go for now. Let's go ahead and unpause. This feels slightly like this War of Mine City game. Well, it's by the same people who made this War of Mine. Martha Moore says, kids should learn, not work. Flora says, that's sad. We work all day, and now the kids have to work, too. By the way, you can click on any of these people to find out full information. Here's Ann Gower. She's a child going to work in the steel wreckage. She's got her parents. Her workplace is chilly. Her rest place is livable. Um, because I think they just hung out there. Very low risk of getting sick right now. <laughs> so, we're going to let these buildings finish up over here. And then once they do, we'll probably start working on housing. Um, but one of the reasons it's important to get kids working is because we need to send people out to hunt and we're going to need our regular workers or regular laborers to do that. So having access to the kids is going to be great. You know what? Over here, I'm actually going to pull back on the workers, assign maximum number of children, and then assign some extra workers back in there as well. So we'll actually pre-get some workers idle. They'll move around. That's fine. Hope and discontent. So we'll, we'll read the tutorial about this. Hope and discontent are crucial for the social stability of the city. They depend on the laws you pass and choices you make in tough situations. Bad working and living conditions, shortages of crucial resources, deaths and various events also have an impact. Track the social mood in the city. If you neglect that aspect, you risk failure as a leader. I like how there's two different meters for this. Uh, so you can like lose hope or you can just become cranky as two separate things. And we get information about the generator over here. When it's too cold, people fall ill, possibly cause them to die. Keep the temperature in your city livable. Click on the generator, activate using the generator panel. We've done that. Generator consumes at least six coal per hour. It heats a circular zone around it. Later, you will be able to increase the power and range of the generator. Okay, there we go. Now we've got a full 20 people working on construction here. Maybe the kids don't work in construction. That's possible. But they sure as hell will go and pick at debris. I think we can also get the children to work in the cookhouse. Ah, so the cookhouse is actually done and ready to go, and yeah, children can work there. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and make sure we've got kids working there. That way they don't have to wander out into the snow. It's, you know, it's a little bit nicer. So they're gonna start cooking some meals. So it produced 10 food rations from five raw food. Oh, and we got a decision to make. No roof over our heads. Captain. A few people are concerned about the lack of shelters. We literally have no shelters built whatsoever for people right now. Sleeping on the ground raises the risk of falling ill. Should we do something about it? We can say, no, screw you. Or we can say, yeah, let's set up some tents. We'd have two days to make sure at least half of our people are in houses. Or we can say, I am not one for half measures and promise that I'll have shelters for everyone in two days. Bunkhouses don't store more than tents, but they are insulated. Should we promise all of them or half of them? I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead for like 
No half measures. No half measures, people have spoken. All right. So we have promised that within two days, we will have everyone in a shelter. I'm sure it's fine. So in terms of shelter, we have two housing options. We've got tents and we've got bunk houses. Tents, a thinly insulated sleeping place for 10 people. Bunk houses, a sleeping place for 10 people, cramped but protected from the weather. Base heating two requires 20 food and 10 steel. Tents is a base heating of one but only need 10 wood. Here's what I propose. We build tents in this inner ring that is right next to the generator and is therefore warm. And then, because we're probably not gonna have enough room for that, we'll uh, start building a second ring and we'll build bunk houses there which will be more insulated. That's what I'm gonna propose. So I'm gonna go ahead and tuck these in. We're gonna queue up a lot of tents. So each one of these fits tents. That's 20, 30. Oh, and then we're out of wood. Okay, well that's all we can queue for now. And that's okay. I think, um, so it's rest time right now. People aren't working. They, I believe they still construct. And in fact, you can see that there's a lot of people building here. I think that anyone who's not actively in a work site will construct. And that includes like during rest time. So. Wisdom of the crowd. Captain, a word of advice. People usually look for the quickest solution, not the best one. You don't have to agree on everything they ask, even if that's Twitch chat. Uh, if you fix the problem your way, it's fine. But if you fail, you'll have to deal with the consequences. So this is a game reminding you, you don't have to listen to these whiners. Okay. We have finished... Oh, survivors. With basic resources secured, for now, we can try to rescue those that we left behind. Build a beacon! Scout the Frostlands and save as many survivors from our expedition as possible. You'll need a workshop to design plans for more advanced buildings. So this is our hunter's hut. It needs actual workers assigned to it. So I'm going to go and uh, grab some workers from here. Max out at 10 of 10 over here. Okay, the only people that are idle right now are our engineers. Um, and I'm okay with leaving them idle for now because we'll probably just keep using them for construction until we assign them to proper things. These are homeless. We're down to 70 homeless. Things have gotten slightly better. Hooray! Shanties, working children, miserable conditions. Looks like New York in the 1890s. It looks like every game that I ever play. Shanties, working children, miserable condition. Hey, we're playing Tropico! This is like Tropico, but in a cold place. Mm-hmm. So some tents are being set up, and again, I wish I could zoom in just a little bit more. Like, there's that, they've got little fires, probably in like an oil drum or something like that. You know, people are trying to warm themselves. Even here, you can see someone right here, they're holding their hands up to the generator. You know, is it a worship or are they just trying to warm themselves? Okay, we've got 50 people housed now. Uh, we're out of wood, so we can't um, extend that any more than that. Uh, what I could do temporarily is find another pile of crates right over here and actually we might want to assign our engineers to that tomorrow just so that we can get more wood in faster uh, we don't need as much steel wreckage I'm gonna leave this as, as five right now with the children going there uh, but yeah we'll assign more people to the wood crates tomorrow and try to go and get the rest of our tents up as soon as possible because we'd promise everything we'd finish so you get some information about the hunters hunters bring food leaving the city to hunt in the wilderness each hunt lasts for 24 hours between hunts hunters will see to their needs they can leave the city at any time during their workday initially hunters bring up to 15 raw food from each hunt you can research upgrades to increase the yield dramatically and then we get information about food and hunger over here now hopefully no one will eat the raw food currently because no one started cooking yet because we haven't had a work shift yet because I really want the, the food to be cooked first. I don't think they start eating until they get hungry. So we might still be okay. So we're in rest time. I'm going to fast forward through the night here. There is a schedule. And we can pass laws to affect the work schedule at some point as well. Oh, our first sick person. People living or working in the cold get sick. Left untreated, they fall gravely ill and die. The sick can be treated in the medical post. But helping the gravely ill there... After signing radical treatment law requires extreme measures, which cures pa some patients, but cripples others for life. We can pass a new law, so I'm going to do that now. And what I want to do is I want to pass the law, a food-related law. We can either pass soup. So we can cook soup instead of full meals to feed more people with the same amount of raw food. So this would unlock the soup blueprint in the cookhouse. Signing this will decrease hope and cause discontentment, and eating soup will cause discontentment. Or, we can have food additives. We can add sawdust to meals to make them more filling, if not exactly tasty or healthy. 
This would allow us sawdust as an ingredient for our, in the cookhouse. Signing will slightly decrease hope. Signing will cause discontent. People eating sawdust meal can fall ill. I think we're going to make it soup. I mean, soup is warming. When you're out here like this in the frost, wouldn't you want soup? Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna to go with soup. It's a thin soup. It's not that soup is bad for you. It's that this is like we're really thinning it out, right? Instead of giving people like a hunk of meat, what we're doing is taking this one hunk of meat, chopping it up, putting in a big pot of soup, and then feeding people that, that there. So like one meal is being stretched into many meals of soup. But um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna unlock soup as an option, and we're gonna click on the food the cookhouse over here and click this. So instead of getting ten food rations for five raw food, we're getting thirteen food rations from five raw food. Anyone anything to calm the growling stomach, just like London. Another day, another shift. Well, such is life. Move, lads. There's still plenty of work to do. Stone soup for everyone. So we get some information here about the uh, day-night cycle and daily routine. People wake up at 6 a.m. They have two hours of free time. At 8 a.m. they go to work until 6 p.m., at which point they have six hours of free time and go to bed at midnight. At least until we change some laws. So hope is bad, discontent's going up, lack of shelter, and we made unpopular decisions. We're going to work on shelter. We just need some wood. So we're just waiting for people to start going to work again. And then we'll start to get some wood trickling in. There you go. Coal's going up again. That's good. We did promise people a lot of shelters. Quill's first plan is to abolish free time. Free time is for suckers. I, get, I love the trail. And the thing is, the trails start to fill up with snow again. As, as they sit idle. Like, I mean, I guess it would make sense. For a game like this, you would really have to work on making a good weather system. Um... And it's something that feels right. So I'm sure a lot of time was spent in the shaders. Again, I love, like, the crap that's on the screen over here. Like, I keep wanting to wipe my own screen because there's this stuff on here and the frost along the edges, and it's just glorious. Everything about it, I feel physically cold with this game here. Mm. So good. Where are you guys going? Oh, they're going on a hunt. Sweet. All right, good luck. Bring us back some food. You can say we've used up all of our raw food over here. We've converted everything into soup. Probably not enough, but it's there. We do have some sick people. We'll have to unlock some stuff for that soon. Um, we need to get some more tents going. This game is very stressful. You could say it's intense. Put the hat back on. Yeah, all right, we're going hunting. This is a gift from someone who came to visit me, a good friend of mine who came from Australia. And gave me that. Briarstone's got one too. We have, ma we have matching, like, dead koala hats. Am I getting booed for my pun? We're out of wood. That's okay. So these tents aren't being built right now because everyone's at work, but that's okay. So that'll bring us up to... Uh, so we have 30 houses. 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Actually, that will get everyone housed. In tents. Drop bear hats, yeah. You gotta, you gotta rub a little. Uh, oh, here's my potion of invis invisibility again. Woo! So they're complaining there's not raw food. We could actually go and say then, okay, children, you can, uh, you can go and do something else then. Right now, maybe. But yeah, I don't think they'll build. Um, I can take the engineers off these extra wood crates then. Let me do that. We'll send the children out here. Children walking through all the snow, that's going to be fine, right? So we'll free up the engineers so that they'll actually go and construct these tents. Because we've got enough wood now. We're okay. And yeah, we'll put the children back on cooking duty once we've got some raw food again. Is there a voice lighter so we can hear the town crier when we pass laws? Or when we sleep work time? Uh... Yeah, that, that, because it does say stuff. It'll say, new laws have been passed, or something like that. But I don't know how much you guys can hear it. And it's hard to dynamically tune the volume during a live stream. Children love trudging through the snow with heavy loads on the back. Yeah, that's what I figured. Here's, here's a child right over here. Oh, you can actually, like, <laughs> barely see them through the snow. Lenora Carpenter. Oh my god. <laughs> Just, like, half buried through the snow. Go and get some wood crates over here. Oh, that's fantastic. 
We can almost pass a new law. What are we going to pass for a new law? Well, we started to get some sick people, so we might want to get some sort of medical bay set up. Yeah, the snow gets deeper and the trails fill in. So this is where all our hunters went, right? So when they left, they cleared this completely because they were walking in file. But this is starting to fill up again. Does Quill's glee at child hard labor and suspect suspect food additives make Ascension nervous about a possible career in politics? I figure Ascension does need to start a career in politics just so that she can offset me. <laughs> eat the sick, more soup for everyone? Uh, that is a decision. Not eat the sick. But when we get our first dead, we'll have to make a decision um, about a few things. Um, so, for example, here's alternative food source. Alternative. In these terrible times, we must do the unthinkable to survive. We won't let the bodies of our dead go to waste. So we could start using corpses as raw food. Uh, using this ability can raise discontent and lower hope dramatically if people find out what you did. There's also the choice of what to do with the dead. Do we bury them in a proper cemetery? Or do we just bury them in a pile of snow? <laughs> uh, but we do have some sick people. So what I'm thinking is we, we get a medical shelter going on. Um, so we've got the option as to whether or not we just try to take care of them. You know, get them in a comfortable bed. Um, you know, try to keep them comfortable. This will increase some hope. Uh, they won't be treated. They'll remain a burden. But it won't be too bad, and I think the people in a medical post maybe eat half as much food. Alternatively, we can try radical treatments. I mean, we don't have a proper hospital. We might not have, even have a proper doctor. But maybe, maybe we can help some people. You know, it's people that get frostbite. They've got frostbite on their toe. Maybe if we cut off the toe, we can save the person from getting worse. Or maybe, you know, that'll cause an infection, and then they'll die from the surgery. Or some people want fighting arena. We could do that. Keep people entertained. We build a fighting arena. Daily fighting spectacles will bring discontent down. Signing will slightly increase hope. Maybe we'll get more entries, but you know, people kind of want a fighting arena. Alright, let's do it. Let's get the fighting arena for now. Hope went up. That's good. I, mean, I don't have to build it right away. We can hold off a little bit. I'm itching to see a good fight. It'll be just like the old times. Okay, uh... Uh, Charity and Genevieve here. Good, betting on fights was the next best thing after the races. These people are bloodthirsty. It's public house when I think... Well, it's probably... I assume it's a pub. Like, you know, a drinking establishment. But who knows. Alright, more and more housing are, are, are starting to get finished up. Hopefully we can get them done before the night and everyone will be housed and that will be wonderful. So our next quest here is to build a workshop followed by a beacon and then rescue some survivors out there. I'm going to finish these tents. Um, but then we will start to work on that. We still don't have any raw food yet. Children versus sick people. Go, go. <laughs> you people are worse than I am. And I'm pretty bad. In mind, we're still going to get this wicked temperature drop in a few days. And we'll see exactly what kind of impact that has on us. It ain't going to be good. But hope is better. You know? Some people are mostly discontent because of lack of shelter right now, but we're working on it. We're nearly done our little shanty town. We got this. Notice there's a little street here, some wooden boards that come through here and then around there. Shelter promise fulfilled. We're the best. We're the best. Everyone feels relieved with a roof, even a flapping one over their heads. Hope grows, discontent falls. Amazing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to build up this road a little bit more. I'm actually going to get a full road ring set up around here. So that we can very comfortably build the next level here. There we go. And I'm wondering, where was that road that we saw? Right here? So I'm going to do one on the opposite side through a couple of these tents right here. There we go. So we got two ways to get from the innermost ring to the outermost. So we have to use some wood to do that, but then we can keep constructing because buildings have to be built adjacent to roads. So we're going to do that, and then we'll probably build the workshop. Who needs housing? It's only terribly cold. Hypothermia is nothing. Hypothermia is in the mind. I mean, if you really want to be warm enough, your body's got a way to shut that whole thing down. 
Do the roads improve travel time to locations? I believe they do. I think people might keep them clear. So it might not make sense to build a road out to one of these piles because they do wear out pretty quick. But um, there are some mineable areas. There's an iron ore deposit that we can build a steelworks to excavate. And somewhere right over here, there's some coal deposits where we can build a mine as well. So we probably won't have roads that go out to these mines, for example. We're almost out of rations. People are eating right now, but no one's gone hungry yet, which is good. We're waiting for our first raw food to come in and hopefully get that done. Okay, let's go. And where is... There's a road connection right over there. Let's build our workshop. Uh, I, hold on. I want to make sure that I've got this road that can continue forward here. If we do say that. I just want to make sure the workshop doesn't interfere with it. There we go. That'll be adjacent to that road. So workshop is where we can research and build certain things, certain more techy things. Second Santos hut is almost necessary. I agree, but I think we can make it to day 10 without having to worry about that. A few people start starving to death, and eh, it's just fewer mouths to feed, right? Exactly. Is there a mechanic for disease spread? Not that I'm aware of. I think people mostly just get sick if they're exposed to too much cold. I think that's the primary sickness mechanic in the game. Too much cold equals you get sick. I know we're out of food, but no one started starving yet. We got we've got a little bit of a leeway for that, and our hunting party is is oot and boot. So they're building up our workshop here. Think think. Fewer mouths to feed and more food for the fridge. That's right. People die from hunger. That just means you know meat's back on the menu, boys. So yeah, we're in this little sort of sheltered crater slash valley here for now. Um, I have no idea what the scope of the main game will be. You know, is it going to be a bigger area or not? Okay, we've unlocked research. And workforce information. Our workers, engineers, and children. And yeah, we can find more information there. So, now that we have our first workshop, um, I absolutely want to make sure we have maxed out engineers here, which um, is five in this workshop. And then we can assign the research. We set our first research from here. Although there'll be an icon at the bottom screen as well. This is the tech tree. Now, only the first two levels are visible. You can see the next, all the, everything else just says available in full game. It's blurred out. So we don't know what the full tech tree will be. But there's a fair amount of stuff going on here. And who knows what it'll actually look like in the full game. So we've got, right now, our immediate quest is to unlock the beacon. Uh, which will give us the ability to communicate over an area and send out scout parties and stuff. We can also build things like steam hubs. Uh, which allow us to um, heat an area around the steam hub. So instead of having everyone clustered around the generator, we can build a steam hub further away and pull up a few buildings around there, for example. Um, we can have faster gathering speeds. The coal thumper, you build it, and by pumping water under great pressure into the cracks, the coal thumper will wash coal to the surface, creating one coal pile per workday. So it's a building that will help us get more coal. A sawmill here, we've got a bunch of frozen trees. We can build a sawmill near them, then we can get wood from that. Steelworks helps us get iron from that iron mine. Um, the hunter's hut upgrade over here means that we will get 20 food per hunt instead of 15. Quite a big upgrade. We've also got the ability to research boilers here, which allows us to heat an individual building by burning coal in that building. And we could get up to tier 2 over here if we unlock the upgrade level 1 over here. Um, so this would let us get these techs over here. Proper coal mining, a wall drill, whatever that is, I can't even click on it, a hothouse. I don't know. So we've got that. Let's go ahead and get the beacon for now because we've got the quest for it. So it's going to take 10 wood just to research the beacon in the first place, although we're doing okay. So yeah, we've got this big workshop over here. For any building, you can mouse over and find out what the temperature there is. Currently, it's livable. It's got uh, insulation, so that gives us a plus one. So I think the base level is like chilly, uh, and we've got a plus one here bringing it to livable. If you get a plus two, then you've got comfortable. But as it gets colder, and it will get colder soon, we're going to start seeing some negative modifiers get applied there. Hope you guys are thinking about the next law. We've got about six hours before we can pass another law. Hot houses or greenhouses? Oh, oh, cool. That would be very nice to unlock. Now you can rotate the buildings. Workshop's not heated, so your scientists probably going to get sick and slow research. I didn't know you could rotate the buildings. I didn't know that. Um, and I know it's not heated. It's too far away. But what we could have done is built bunk houses a little further out because they're insulated and built workshop in the inner circle or some damn thing. I don't know. What's the giant 20 number? Which giant 20 number? Over here? Minus 20 degrees. That's how cold it is. Celsius. 20 degrees below freezing. <laughs> the dead are worth their weight in food. Ha! 
Another day, another shift. Well, such is life. We're doing fine, all things considered. You're goddamn right we're doing fine. So it's rest time. We're just going to wait. Let's fast forward to the next work time, and our research should start over here. I love, like, the day coming in as well. If, like, go to normal work speed, like the sun uh, coming in from over here, starting to peek over the walls of this crater. Really, I mean, really well done effect. I don't know if you heard that. There was like a little bit of a horn. And work time. Get moving. So little voices, little flavor. There we go. Our research has started over here. Excellent. We'll get our beacon tech soon. I know I have no cooks assigned for when the hunt comes back. I've been waiting for the... Uh, I had children assigned to it. I'm just waiting for more food to come in before I sign them there. May as well get the kids to do something useful while they're idle. So right now they're collecting uh, steel over here. And I do have some idle engineers. I guess I could put them out to um, maybe help pick up some more wood over here for now. But we'll try to, we'll have to bring the engineers back for the beacon. Ah, no, I don't think anyone works the beacon. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. So we'll get a little bit more wood. Mm -hmm. Um, I reckon you build the arena before it gets cold, so it has nothing to do with the... Uh, sorry, Daniel, there's, there's weird... The, the, the letters didn't go right on your text. Sorry. Hunters take 24 hours to hunt. You may want another hunt. Another uh, hut. Yeah. Although that would occupy, you know, a bunch more workers. So, you know, because it's 10 workers being reserved by the hunter's hut. I don't know. Although, oh, uh, crate just finished. Do people really want... I mean, I suppose we should probably build another hunting one. I think we can get to day 10 without it. But sure, let's get another hunter's hut over here. Especially since we're going to have some idle workers right now. So they can go and help... They can, they can work that afterwards. Uh, we're still low on wood. Like, steel is something that we don't really need a ton of right away. Got some more wood crates over here. I'll, I'll not assign the workers to it yet. There you go. We'll get some children way out here. Although, those are the children that are supposed to be working the... Uh... Oh, some food just came in. Hold on. Children, go work in the kitchen. Make soup. Yay! I don't think there's... I don't. Oh, there is a time limit on a fighting arena. Oh, shit. I did not know that. Hold on. Fighting arena. Get built. I did not realize there was a, a time limit on the arena. Okay, we're good on coal still. Still desperately need wood, so some people are assigned to that. So we've got idle workers, but they're, they're, they're building, which is good. Oh, we have a decision to make. What's this? <gasps> a child was injured in a work accident. Sir, a child was injured at work. It was careless yet, but that's how children are. Stupid kids. What should we do with the kid? Do we give the kid a day off or scold the kid for being careless? Right away, people are saying scold. Scold, scold, scold. Wow. Remember to put the kids in the arena? You need to harden them and live in the cruel, cruel world. All right, we're going to scold the kid for being careless. Hope has gone down. We promised to fill one desirable decision. One forlorn decision was made. Wow, forlorn. Twitch chat. You people are brutal. There's something wrong with you people. I love it. Yee. Beacon research is done. We can start a new research program. We can do that either from clicking here or going here. We can build extra workshops. There's diminishing return. So the first one gives you 100% research rate. The second one, I think, is like plus 50%, then plus 30%, then plus 10%, and then that's it. It's like caps out. Um, I, I feel like what we might want to do is upgrade the hunter's hut. You put the cold in gold. We're going to do that so we get even more food on future hunts. I think I like that idea. And we're going to let these buildings complete, and then we'll start building the, um, the, the beacon. The bacon! Oh, we get some more wood crates there. You know what? Let's take these children off the steel, because we've got an excess of that, and we're going to throw them on this wood crate over here. Because wood, wood is, like, definitely the thing we need the most of early on. Well, that, you know, coal to stay warm, but we're doing okay with coal. We've got about a five-day stockpile right now. So we can actually, um, when there's about five days left in the game, we can actually turn off all of our coal mining at that point because the demo only lasts ten days. So we can, like, you know, save some stuff. We've got the second hunter's hut is done. I guess I will go ahead and assign the... 
Wait, hold on. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's 10 of 10. I was just seeing the 40 available, and I was like, wait, what? Oh, I was gonna say, wait. I was gonna say, how come we're, we've are we got so many people? Because a bunch of piles of stuff just went away. We still need to mine a little bit more coal. Um, so I will go and take this coal pile and assign 15 workers over there once again. Fighting arena has been established in accordance with the new law. Hope grows, discontent falls. I have no idea why it makes people so happy, but it pleases me. Uh, we do have to assign one person in here to manage the fighting arena. So there we go. We have one worker assigned over here to manage that. So all our construction queues are done. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a beacon now. So we'll build it right, right next to the workshop. Why not? Right over here. Get that built. So it says in the mouse over, allows us to send scouts who survey the wilderness, search for goods and survivors, and bring them to the city. Sounds pretty good. Weather changes. Yes, I know. We are going to get colder weather very, 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 very soon. It'll be a 20 degree drop. Two men enter, one leaves. Yeah, it's in operation. We fulfilled another promise, which helped people, and yeah, hopefully it's bringing things. We've got five hungry people. Six hungry people. Well, they're probably going to go and grab the food rations. I think is maybe how it works here. We'll see. We'll see if that number goes away. We still have sick people. Oh, we need to do a law. I propose we pass radical treatment. We do crazy stuff to try to get sick people back at it again. So we're going to sign this. We're going to create a medical post. And we're going to chop off toes if we have to. Get people back to work. Uh, I need some more wood. And it is rest time right now, so no one's picking up any wood. Well, we will be saving lives. Well, some of them. I hope I don't draw the short straw when, it, when I fall ill. Maybe what we're doing is like cutting body parts off one person to attach them onto someone else. I, I, I could see that coming from this game. Beacon operational. We're no longer lost and blind. From now on, our people will be able to survey the icy barrens that surround us and learn their secrets in time. World map. These are the Frostlands. And again, like, these mountains look just gorgeous to me. It's exactly like everything about the color is great. I wonder if it changes day-night cycle. I'm not sure. But this beacon can create a scout. We need 40 wood and 5 workers. But we will create a scouting group that will go out and operate in the world. So, again, we need some wood. So we'll just wait until tomorrow. I love this. The beacon is a freaking hot air balloon that goes up. It's, again, it's frost punk. It's steampunk. It's all this. It's like... It's a hot air balloon on a tether. That maybe has a radio signal, and you can see the light going around, so it's like a lighthouse. It's like, that's amazing! We got a crash site here, and we've got the Lost Expedition. So yeah, we're going to be going for that, but we need we need wood before we can do that. So, and again, it is rest time, so none of that is happening. we got the second hunter's hut going on. We've got the fighting arena. We've got some hungry people. Yeah, we're officially out of food. Um... I'll leave the kids in here now because we've got two hunters things and the last thing I want is for raw food to show up and the people to eat that without it getting converted because I forgot to assign people to the kitchen. So let's just fast forward until tomorrow. We'll get some more wood. Um, wooden crates over here. I'm going to go and assign our, all our idle workers over there because there's nothing to be built so they can help get some wood faster. I will have to take five of them off of here to make our scouting party tomorrow though. Another day, another shift. Well, such is life. Indeed, it's 6 a.m. Things are going tolerably well. Tolerably well! Huge success! Build a medical hut. Uh, we will. Soon. I'm going to prioritize the bacon. Ooh, discontent just went up. Bad food, bad health care. Cold at home, cold at work. Yeah, okay. So the temperature is now minus 40. So if we say click on a tent and mouse over this, you can see the tents count as chilly. Because there's double minus from this weather. It's so cold. And if we check some of these other buildings, like look at this. This workshop is frozen cold. Well, it's cold, not frozen, I guess. It is still working. Some buildings need to be warm to operate. Oh, what's this? Working children. After a recent accident, I don't know what you're talking about, a mother refused to send her child to work. She's afraid he also will get injured. We could let it slide, but wouldn't that be unfair? Gotta wait for the chat to, la to, to catch up. People are like, decision, decision. It's like, there we go. Uh, what do we want to do? 
It would be unfair. Work. Execute them. Holy cow, Yorick. <laughs> work, work, slide. Work, work. Gonna work. Yeah. No. He must work today. Must work. Eat the child. <laughs> Let's send him here. Of course you still have to work. What the hell do you think is going on? So we have zero idlers. We just have to wait for some wood. We need uh, 40 wood for a scout. Yeah, we'll have to wait for 40 wood to come in. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pull uh, five workers off of a job. And then we will send them out um, as a scouting party going forward. Four days worth of coal. We will have to go and set... Ooh, generator overdrive. What is this? You can put the generator into overdrive. This will result in more heating, but put the generator under stress. Keep an eye on the stress gauge. When it reaches 100%, the generator will explode. So yeah, because we can't activate higher steam levels because we don't have that tech yet. We can't activate greater range because we don't have that. We do have an overdrive button, though. I mean, presumably, it will use more coal as well. Let's see. Vroom. Still says four days. There's the stretch gauge. I don't know if we... Uh, temperature overlay. Oh, this is the stress meter here. I see. So these houses are now livable. Maximum overdrive. At least we'll see the gauge. So we can keep it overridden until the temperature improves just a scooch, maybe. Explode the generator means everyone will be warm for the rest of their life. You're not wrong. Okay. One, two, three, four, five workers are pulling back. And we create a new scouting unit over here. So now we've got a waiting scout. And we can deploy them on a mission. So here's the Lost Expedition. With This is our quest here, Rescue the Survivors. So we're going to go and send our scout over there. So it'll take them about a day to get there, I think it said. Yeah, here, ten hours it'll take them to get there. And yeah, daytime. Day-night cycle in the world map, too. Just wonderful. Excellent stuff. Yeah, so I don't know. Does it say what our coal rate is anywhere? I don't know. Oh, more wood crates were depleted. So that's okay. We've got some wood crates over there. Let's send the children out over there. It's going to be fine. And the extra engineer. Just try to keep getting this wood in as quickly as possible. Hunter's Hut research upgraded. Nice. Okay. I'm going to get the boilers. Because I think we might need them for something. But yeah, let's go ahead and build our medical post. We just need some more wood again. We will build that. Oh, six per hour. It says on the right. Oh, down here. Yeah. So maybe the rate doesn't change. Interesting. I don't know. We'll want the boilers because what will happen... Um, is we'll be able, we'll have a button. Um, actually, we've got a law option. Let's go and turn that on because we can see something cool. Let's sign the emergency shift law. So, by doing this, we now have a new button in our buildings to force people to work 24 hours straight. Let's do it. Uh, let's do it on like a wood pile. Right over here, wooden crates. Um, we need more people here, though. This one here. Okay, this wooden crate. 24 hours. I bet you we're going to kill some people doing this. Especially since we've got children assigned to this particular thing. we got five children who will have to work 24 hours straight, walking through all this snow to go and gather wood. Oh yeah, there's a consumption tab as well. It's like overall rating. But here's like the six hour there. 144 coal per day. I turn off the overdrive. It still says the same amount, so I don't know. Turn it on. It's running your childhood. <laughs> Get the kids to work overtime. Diggy diggy hole! Alright, food rations are in. Yeah, so we, we do have our, our cookhouses operating. We could put this 24 hours as well, but what's the point? And you can't do it with the hunter's huts because they just work, you know fast as they can, but you can see the list of everyone who is the hunter as well, which is kind of neat. So just operating in a cycle. So hunger should go down. We've got a lot of people sick. Eight, six, five gravely ill. Let's get our medical post down. Um, yeah, you can rotate the buildings. It looks like it occupies the same amount of space, so I think it's mostly a cosmetic thing. So we'll see. We do have some idle specialists who will go and help uh, construct this. Mm-hmm. Oh, did I miss an event? That's possible. Boo! 
It's too busy talking about stuff. Oh well. New symbol on the medical tent. Yeah. So the medical tent is going to be too cold. It needs to be at least chilly to operate. Now, luckily it's going to get warmer very, very soon. And we're researching boilers. So we can get a, a coal boiler operating in the medical coast to try to keep it a bit warmer. How's our scout? Two hours away. Yeah, we've unlocked a building ability. That's good. And I do suspect putting the medical tent on the inner ring would, in fact, be better. So what we probably would have done is, like, knowing that, is leave one of these tents, like, away. There's probably a way to bulldoze. Yeah, demolish. So, um, or you just leave a gap with the tents at the start, so that when you unlock your medical uh, post, you can put it in there nice and warm. All right, this is done. We're going to assign five engineers. It has to be engineers here. And yeah, but it is inoperative because of the low temperature. But we are researching very, very quickly here, especially since these guys were working a 24-hour shift. Um, I don't think they still are. No, they must be. Did I never hit this button properly before? It's possible. By the way, over here you can see their work time um, for different things. Oh, had I hit it on the medical post? I think I did. Well, let me unassign anyone over there. That's what happened. I set it to the wrong thing. Not a big deal, though. We'll just unassign the, the engineers for now. I hit it on the wood pile. That's right, I hit it on the wood pile. Thank you. Yeah, we'll hit it there. Yeah, there's no option in the medical post for that, because I think people are always there. Oh, we've reached the lost expedition. So, what we want to do now is search the area. A trail to the north. Thank God you found us! Without a leader, we spent days unable to decide which way to go. And this waiting has got us starving. These people are too stupid to live. They showed us a trail leading north to some kind of shelter. On a hill to the west, a dark cave entrance is just visible. Storm shelter and inhabited cave discovered. Now, what do we want to do? Do we want to escort the survivors to a city because they're too stupid to live? Or do we want to let them go on their own way there? Some may not last the journey. Keep in mind, we do need to finish this quest, which requires us to save 20 people. On the other hand, I think there's 25 here. People want me to just send them. Herd them back so you can eat them. Send them, escort, send them, escort. Send, send, escort. They won't survive being sent, escort. I think, I think the theme here is these people are clearly too stupid to live. So we will escort them to their city. There we go. So this um, scout has in his inventory his cargo... 20 workers and 5 engineers and he's on his way back to the city so there you go we'll get more population whoa two of our people just died death by overwork <laughs> captain a boy working on an emergency shift oh we killed a kid <laughs> fell down dead in front of his friends he was fine minutes before tired but fine emergency shifts are taking the toll so yeah the kids we had to send out into the middle of like the winterness overnight over here we've killed some children good job everyone First death. Captain, one of our men just died. Sickness, accidents, everlasting cold. No matter how prepared we are, in these harsh conditions, it will happen from end time. Especially with the laws I pass. What should we do with the body? Let's open the book of laws. So, do we want to build a proper cemetery? Or do we want to just dump the bodies into a pile of snow? We've got two hours to decide because we can't pass a, a law quite yet. Emergency shift has its price. Oh, I think a third person has died. <laughs> I'm not sure here. Uh, no, just the two. Alright, that's fine. Most people want a proper cemetery. Excellent. We, we will do that. <laughs> oh, man, oh man, oh man. Do we have our boilers yet? No, not yet. Alternative food resource. I think we still have to choose about where to dispose of them. Maybe just keep them frozen in a snow, snow pile until we eat them. Can't eat them if they're buried. Wow, that really tanked the hope. Yeah, a little bit. We have positive entertainment, which is good. One group of people were ignored. Apparently I did, you know, I missed that event. One forlorn decision. Two grown-up died, one child died. Okay, so we did have three people die. Eh. 
We're about to get a whole bunch more people. It's fine. How come? Come on, get this research going. Chop, chop. You're on a 24 hour thing. Okay, we'll get the full set of uh, engineers assigned here. And then boiler tech is done. So let's go and get the, the next tier thing. It takes 50 wood to do it, but let's do it. It'll give us a, some cool options there. And we're going to turn on the boilers here. We turn that on. The boiler's on. It uses one coal per hour. And presumably... This should get warmer. Now right, we'll see what happens when it work day starts. Book of Laws! Oh, the overdrive is close to max. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a ways to go. We'll probably get a big warning when it comes up. Oh, it went from freezing to cold. Oh, okay. So it did get better, but it's still not good enough. Double rations for the ill. Overcrowding. Triage. People wanted a cemetery. So we're going to go ahead and cemetery it up. Maybe we can't eat them, but that's going to be okay. So we will sign that. We will promise to build a cemetery. I'll build, I'm build. i going to build it uh, next to the um, the medical bay, because that seems relatively efficient. <laughs> cemetery. Right here. Into the generator. I'm, uh, I know, realize we've gotten a few uh, contributions to the Whiskey and Chocolate Fund, the tip jar. I don't want to tab out of the game to read them because I'm worried that we're going to lose our video feed again. So we'll, we'll, uh, I'll check them out right after we're done with Frostpunk. Also, as a reminder, when we're going to play, uh, what do we play next? Machinki. Yeah. Machinki. Choo choo trains. Fishing deck. The cemetery doesn't need to warm. I know that, but I, I want it next to the medical bay, because why not? Anyway, we're, we're, we're you know, going to be finishing the demo soon. Let's go for the fast speed, actually, because we've gone, we've played this for about an hour and need to get it going. Emergency shifts. Sir, one of the people assigned to the emergency shift declined to work. He said that he's already worn out and he doesn't want to end up dead like one of his friends did. Tell him that he can rest, or this is not the time to rest. You know what? The discontent is really high and the hope is really low. We're going to give him a break. Because people are getting super duper cranky. Super duper cranky. And yeah, this is the 10 day demo. You're going very fast speed. Another person died! Jeebus. Okay, we need the temperature to improve so that our medical bay can start working as well. There we go, our cemetery is established. Now we can put our dead to rest. Hope grows, discontent falls. Another person just died. I think the game just crashed. I, my uh, my scouting party uh, just arrived home, and I'm pretty sure the game just crashed. It didn't crash before when I tried this, and I apologize for that. That sucks. Again, it is a very early pre-release demo. Um, there's not even an announced release date for this game yet. Uh, I did get this home when I played it before. The scouting party arrives, giving 25 people. Um, then I can send the scouts out again to check out some of those things, including find some information that can lead us to maybe another city. And then that's about kind of the end of the game. But yeah. Uh, I don't think the generator blew up. It was close, but it wasn't quite there yet. It, it, the generator is like maybe at 90%. We would have needed to turn it off in a second, but we're still okay. I'm pretty sure it's the, uh, the fact that the scouting party was about to arrive that caused it to go. Uh, well, anyway, that's Frostpunk. I get, like, first of all, the developer... 11-bit studios or whatever. They're the people who made this war of mine. Clearly, they have expertise in making games um, that are cool, atmospheric, make you do really interesting and difficult decisions, um, and so on and so forth. So this, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sold. I'm sold. I think this is going to be an easy, easy thing to say. I'm going to have to play this again when it comes out.